How do we get those down? <clears throat> These guys. It's called a wire walker. Walker Texas Wire Ranger. Okay? They take up a lot of room in your tackle box. I hate them. Got to use them. What this guy does, all these that I tie up, guys, got a snap swivel on it. It's the only time you'll see this guy using snap swivels. So I can quick change. I can take this one, clip it on, drop it down. Clips onto here. I can also take these if I wanted, tie a perfection loop in here by the knot tying DVD, you know what that is, and then hook it in. I want quick change so I can go through this progression, finding the colors. What this guy does, you drop it down, it comes in a lot of different weights. You drop it like so, this guy hits, drags along, tick, tick, tick. Typically when we pull these, we pull them on fire line. If we're using a spinning reel, stealth, if we're using a bait caster. I typically like to pull them with bait casters. Because these go up three ounces or more, and you're cranking on that thing, you're just going to be working yourself to death. So I always try to pull with a level wind and use the braid. What that does is allow you to go down and you feel the bottom. You can feel it dragging through sand, gravel, rock. You can feel the subtle bites. That guy clips onto here, takes it back. A fish that is not real aggressive, you want a long leader. You want to get away from this thing. A fish that's aggressive during its prime, if you're ripping through and speed trolling, <coughs> see this? That's a flashy dude, ain't it? You're actually using this like you would use a flasher or a set of Jack Lloyds. That's an attractant. Weight stands out. Now, what is that thing? Kind of On these, you would use like a 20 would be fine. 20. Would. Some of these guys have a quick change. You can actually pop these off and change them out if you want. Slide them on and off. But with this guy right here, once again, look at the color. It's green and red, fluorescence. You'd just clip on, but now you'd want your leader to probably be shorter because you're using this as an attractant. If those fish are not turned on, I don't want all this garbage on here. I want more subtle. So longer on this one for neutral to negative fish. I could run shorter on this one because I'm using this as an attractant to draw them in. Real muddy water. Short leader, 18, 24 inches. This guy's spinning, throwing off vibration. That guy's spinning. It's a happy party. Now, when you rig these things up, they're set up to rig crawlers. You can rig leeches, uh, minnows. We can't run live minnows here. You can run the jarred up ones. But typically what you'll see is night crawlers and leeches. A night crawler rig, if the fish are active and wanting a big presentation, that's the three hook setup. Put a whole crawler on there. A little less inactive, smaller presentation. You can go all the way down and tie one up, but you go all the way down to just a single hook and a short piece of crawler. There's a lot of discussion in the walleye spinner world about, well, I can do it with just a little chunk. I can do it with a full one. I can guarantee you, more than likely, whether it's full or it's small, you're probably going to catch the same amount of fish. Why is that? What are they coming to? The vibration. When they get up on it, if there's a little chunk of worm there or a big chunk of worm there, it's all going to smell the same. That's what's going to make them go through with the commitment. So, size of bait, you can run whatever you want. You know, sometimes the bigger thing, they may draw bigger fish. Usually what draws bigger fish, to use an example to you, up at Lesser Slave Lake, you go up there, 200 walleyes jigging. By noon, they're all that big. Start pulling harnesses. Still, all that big. Put a big chunk of worm on there, still that big. I told my dad we didn't drive 1,300 miles to catch walleye that big. I put from here, let me show you what we did. <clears throat> and the color is not going to match, but we went from that, guys, to that. And all of a sudden, the walleyes went from about 14 to 16 inches to about 26 inches, just like that. Created more thump, more flash. The larger the thump, possibly the bigger the reward, bigger the fish. 
I went through the whole progression of changing little small. They got leeches up there as big as my arm. They're ridiculous. Scare the heck out of you. <laughs> Pull them out. They're just trying to grab. It's like, what is that? It's a snake. <laughs> it didn't matter. What mattered was the size of the blade. The bigger blade brought bigger fish, not the bigger bait on the back end of it. Now, once again, reverting back to the how many times have you seen Seth put bait on anything? Doesn't happen. If I'm going to run those, Walleye well, Jim does the same thing. Gulp night crawlers. Fake ones. A lot easier to deal with. You get bites, you can bet that's probably going to stay on there. Not going to be constantly changing out. Especially with what's happening in Roosevelt now, you got a bunch of smallmouth this big. Walleye well, guys hate them, they eat everything you drop. Put the artificial on there, it does not matter. I have fished side by side. My buddy fishing. Crawler. Me getting tired. That's nice. Me getting tired of baiting up. So I said, we're going to do a little experiment. Right here. I caught more fish than he did. You know why? He spent 90% of the time putting worms on it. You hook this up, the odds are it's going to stay. Here's what happens. You get a hit with the harness, and you go, oh yeah, whoo! And then you get nothing, and you leave it down there, he stripped you. This thing here, probably not going to strip you. You get a hit and miss it, you just leave it, keep pulling it. You get these in any color you want, any size you want. Just a curl tail, you can get ribbon tail, like we talked about with the bass, all those different sizes. Plastics will work just fine. The gulp stuff, more powerful than an artificial, than a natural. Scent dispersion. Match the blade. Make the blade work for you. The scent, like the Berkleys are already scented. What I use guys for scent, and I forgot it here in the commotion, but I use the Dr. Juice tournament wall I sent. You know, we, I said, you know, the smell is not that important, but I spray everything I got, night walleye, whatever, with that stuff. It's just something so when they get behind it, like those big wooden minnows, when they get behind it, they got all the vibration coming off and it's just one more thing to get them commit. One little smell coming in there. Just like the power bait worms. They get behind it, it's just a little scent coming in there, bang. It'll work for you. I don't know. No, it's uh, it's awesome stuff. Now with the leeches, you got a couple different styles here. God, I don't want to spill this. <laughs> this is the stuff that may little get you in trouble here, guys. It's bad juju. It stinks. Sort of the wife won't let you back in the house. Okay, gulp leeches, guys. Yep, no, 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 yeah, they're fake. <laughs> um, with a leech, if you were rigging this up, you wouldn't have a double hook. What you'd do is you'd have a single hook on there. Single hook. And the hook size needs to match the size of the bait. You don't want to put some big old hook on there and then just have a leech on there. You want that hook to be concealed. It's got to have a big enough gap so that when you set the hook, it's going to go in. You don't want too much plastic between the gap. So you'd have a single. Now when you hook these up, the way that I like to hook them, even if it's a live one, is through the sucker. Right through the sucker. Like so. You would just come in with your single hook on your spinner rig, and you would just hook it right through the sucker. And then just troll along. When that thing's back there flapping around, they come up behind it, they smell it, eat it. Now something you need to know about leeches. Jim, when's the best leech fishing done around here? What months? September is one of the better ones. Okay. Here's why. Guys will go out there right now and they'll go and buy a bunch of leeches. And I got a bunch of cuts in my hands and that burns. I hope I don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, your best leech bite is in the late summer months. Leeches load up on those deep shelves and humps in 40 feet of water. The walleyes feed on them then. There are some places, I believe Holter is one of them over in Montana, where they get a good leech bite in May. What I think it has to do with is they get a good mayfly hatch coming out also. 
It's a little tiny black thing moving through the water. Around here, your leech bite around July, August, September. Jim was pulling them up up there in September. They were puking out leeches. Right, Jimbo? Yep, live ones full of them. Okay. Night crawlers, you want to use the rest of the time. Use the night crawlers the rest of the time. Minnows, it's a shame. I wish we could use minnows because it looks like a lot of fun, but we can't. What we can do is use these guys again. <coughs> minnows are typically used best in cold water, tipping jigs and stuff, cold water. They'll eat them all the time. But what you can do, once again, is the gulp minnow, like so. You would use a single hook. You would hook it through the snout on your spinner, just like so. There you go. Now you got a spinner rig with, with a minnow on there. Once again, using a smaller hook. You want to conceal it. Fluorocarbon line, I got all the things in place. I might as well make everything concealed as best I can. Wow, that is nasty. <laughs> so, that's a little bit of spinner talk, guys. Now, when you go buy beads, a lot of times, remember we talked about the clear baits? Get some clear beads. That's why glass is kind of cool, because it can be red but see-through. Remember, the clear ones are when they get a little negative, a little neutral. Make is, I mean, you could do, I mean, there's thousands of combinations of these things. One of the things you need to remember with them, if you look at all these that I tie, if you look through Walleye Jim's box, with the exception of the smile blade, because it has to be threaded beforehand, all of them have, my hands are so greasy, but all of them have up here a quick release. Now I can take this box of blades and click. I know that this bead chain's working good. Maybe I need to put a bigger Colorado on there. Maybe I need to switch it over to a willow. Now instead of undoing everything, I can just clip and unclip. Makes it quick. It's interchangeable. See how important it is to make your own? Tying your own snails and stuff? Customization. Customization of it. And all you got to do is go to the walleye section of the sporting goods store. Most of them, you're going to see all this stuff will be together. If you can't find it, go find Jim. He'll find it for you.